Hey, hello, my friends. I hope all is fine and well with you and yours. Hi. Well, I just wanted you to say, guys, to say good, you guys to say good morning to the fish. And the fish decided that t- today we're going to answer one of the questions that we get quite often. It's if you could break down how your system works as simple as possible from point A to point B. Now, I will answer that. But before I go into that, I really want to thank um, a few people. I want to thank once again Dr. James Letts because when we first started this program that we're working on, uh, my system ate up about 250 watts an, an hour, and I thought that was really good, but now we're almost below 100 watts an hour, and we're going to even drop lower than that, but the system works way more efficiently, and a lot of these things I'm going to show you, he's the reason why, so thank you, Doc. Please um, keep uh, keep the info coming. I love it. I love being part of something so large, something so grand, and something that will eventually help the world. Now, this here would be our return line, so... This is the water that's returning to the main fish enclosure. This is our line that feeds our system. Now imagine you have a waterfall, all right, that goes into a river, and the river then goes into another waterfall, all right, and that waterfall hits the ground. Well, this substrate would be our ground. If you notice, our water and our waterfall comes to about here. Well, the top of our substrate is about two to three inches above that. That's because we don't want the water that's from the waterfall to saturate the ground so much that it ruins the actual top, the top layer, the substrate. So let's keep going. Now in this ground that we have, we have all types of wildlife growing, all types of, in this this case, not trees, but plants. And they're growing healthy. And um, our type of system that we're using is actually called um, a constant flood, or in my case, I call it a constant flow because it never actually floods the system. It's a constant flow. It mimics the bank of a river or something of that nature. So we have another tier to this mountain down here. So we have another waterfall from this mountain, underground waterfall from this mountain that releases into this other layer of land down here. Now let's take a look at this other waterfall. You see how low that underground river is? You see how low it is compared to the top of the ground? Yeah. Once again, so when that water is just sitting there, or when that water is going through that waterfall, it's not damaging the ground on top, so it's really healthy for plants to grow. Now we go into the final waterfall. Boom, let's move this out the way. Now you see how high that water gets in that waterfall? Because remember, this waterfall is going directly into an underground outlet. So you're not going to see the water from the waterfalls on top of your substrate. But in this case, substrate, but we'll just call it ground. So once again, we have about two, two and a half inches from the water basin. And that provides a beautiful substrate for us to grow plants in. You guys see that? But in nature, sometimes trees fall down. In this case, it's not a tree, but it was a basil plant and it didn't necessarily fall. We removed it because we need room for some more of these beautiful winter greens we have going on back here. We removed this earlier today, but take a look at that beautiful white root structure the brown stuff you see in there that's much older these white root these white roots these are all brand new and this is because of the changes that we made with dr letch now um mind you mind mind you you haven't seen me speak anything about a pump yet because at the end of all of this all of the water through these two basins comes into this reservoir well in our case it's called a sump pump because this is our return pump so there's a pump on the bottom of it there. It's a, um, I think it's a 55 watt pump. So it's not that powerful, pardon me, a 50 watt pump. So it's not that powerful, but it's enough to bring all of that water that's draining back into this bucket through the holes in this bucket to bring it right back up in that line so that it goes right into that outline that you see that we originally started from. Now, some questions that I've gotten about, okay, if it's a constant flow, do you have um, dead spots in your substrate? Well, I really don't, and here's why. We have a thriving colony. For those of you who haven't, please take a second and go back in our videos and take a look, and you'll see them a lot. Um, We have a thriving colony of red wiggler worms in here, and they act just as worms act in normal soil. Why do you have worms in normal soil gardening? Because they eat the way at the dirt and they make room for aeration for oxygen to get to your roots and our aquaponics rigs the um, red wiggler worms do the same thing now if you guys have any questions please feel free to ask i hope you enjoyed it let's say bye to the fishies before we take off 
I'll go into detail about a lot more of the changes that we made on the system, the improvements, but that gives you basically a background on how this very, very simplified system works. Here's a watermelon there. <laughs> Here's a watermelon there. Hey guys, I want to give a shout out to um, Brian Bullock. Is it Brian Bullock um, Hydroponics? All right. I also want to give a shout out to um, 100 Gardens. I'll put some um, tags to their spots, to their um, pages, to their YouTube um, channels online. These guys have been instrumental to me. They mean a lot. But most of all, go out there, share a hug, share a smile, love thy neighbor. You know the rest. Peace and blessings, my friends. Plant that first seed, and together we grow.